Hey, Coach Miller here again with B2B Lax. And this is a great one. I, actually, this might be my favorite one. Coaching offense so that it can be conveyed year after year. So we've heard from a bunch of coaches, you know, youth, high school, and they're trying to figure out how can I install an offense that I can implement year in, year out. And, you know, I've talked to college coaches about this, my Tufts coach specifically, and he was studying this thing eight years ago, like, what do I need to do to make sure that, you know, every year we come in, because like Tufts has limited practice time compared to other D3 schools. So they needed to get something that stuck and they needed to get something that they could implement year after year. So like this one's dear to my heart. And I got a couple of bullets that I just wanted to go through with you so that, you know, give you some ideas for, you know, when you're coaching your own team or whatever you're doing, you know, whether it's youth or high school or middle school, that'll give you some ideas so you can, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single, every single year. So first and foremost is like, keep it simple. So if you're playing out of a couple sets, like don't try to, you know, master offense of, you know, out of five different sets, like being perfect out of a two, 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 like being great out of a three, two, one, being able to do a open set, just like stick one or two and get really good at that and just concentrate on that. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. I know like the more complicated you get, especially with limited practice times that you guys might have, like limited exposure to these kids that you might have, they're playing other sports, they got schoolwork, you know, their families are taking vacation. So if you can keep it simple, like come down to a few different terms, like for instance, hey, when we get the ball, we're attacking the cage. We're gonna support that ball carrier left and right. And then the other guy is going to be a threat to score. So like no matter what happens, there's three, you know, instances of, you know, keeping it simple. Like no matter where you're on the field, like, you know, your philosophy is to get to the cage. All right? You're going to support the ball, pick, ball carrier left or right. And those guys that aren't left or right are going to be a threat to score. So everybody's above the cage. So that just gives you an example. So like keeping it simple might be, hey, we're going to come down and we're going to play in a 2-3-1 follow set. So we're just going to you know, dodge, get a pass, pass, re-dodge, get, get it through X, keep on doing that. We're gonna hammer that home. Like that's the offense we're gonna play. The more stuff you try to throw at these guys, especially, you know, the more complicated you're gonna get, the more bogged down these kids are gonna get. And when you get in those pressure situations, it's really gonna cause chaos because you're not gonna own it. You're not gonna have your own simple style, all right? Get some catchy concepts. So at BTB Lax, we have some catchy concepts. We always call them boxing and keeping it up by the ear. We call QTP, quad threat to position. You know, we have, you know, the finishing dodge, the setup dodge, the secondary dodge, those types of things. So get some catchy concepts for your own program so that you know, so these kids, your players know what they mean, you know, and what they, you know, what they, you know, what they're supposed to do. So even at Gonzaga, you know, where I coach now, like we have, you know, Eagle, we have Follow, we have 23 Pop, you know, we have all a few different concepts that people just know what they are, all right? And last but least, figure out what your philosophy is going to be. Are you more of an aggressive coach? Are you more of a, you know, conservative coach? Whatever that's going to be, like you want to pack it in, rely on your defense, get a good solid goalie play and win the game 6-5? Or do you want to try to win the game 20 to 19, like going to the cage left and right and just, you know, doesn't care about turnovers. You're just going to the cage and we're going to play defense. We're going to get the ball back and we're going to run, run, run. So figure out what that philosophy is that you have and then just hammer that home to your kids. Hammer that home to your players. And then once you get that, that can evolve over the years, but you just want to add on a little bit with that same mentality of keeping it simple, incorporating those catchy concepts so you're like, look, you know, we're, you know, whatever program we are, we're going to play conservative, we're going to play good defense, we're going to stick to the fundamentals, and we're going to play out of a 2-3. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to win games doing that way. So with Coach Miller from B2B Lax, we'll see you in other videos. Hey, Coach Miller here, and I have a question for you. Are you a youth or high school player or parent that's thinking about the college lacrosse recruiting process? If you're on the younger side, you're probably wondering, how do I get started? And if you're older, well, you're probably a little antsy that the process isn't moving as quickly as it should, or you're neck deep in it and you might not be getting any traction. 
Trust me, I've been there myself and so have all the other guys I know. Parents, former players, the kids I currently coach in high school, whatever it is. Kids and parents just don't have a very firm grip on the process. How it works, what they should be doing. They don't have the insider knowledge of what exactly coaches are looking for in a prospect beyond whether or not he can play. And because of that, kids and parents actually end up making crucial mistakes that actually hurt their chances of getting recruited. Well, what if I told you we spent a couple of months working with Matt Kerwick, the head coach at Cornell, Scott Urich at UDC, and Jim Berkman at Salisbury, putting together some completely free training that would help you fix and avoid those deadly mistakes. I've got to tell you, these coaches have been recruiting kids for years and they know exactly how prospects can get their attention. And if you're making any of these mistakes, your stock goes way down in their eyes. Our coaches actually like to call these mistakes recruitment killers because they absolutely kill your chances of being recruited. And if you're not getting emails or calls back from coaches, it's likely because you're doing the wrong things. So the four of us sat down and we worked to put together something pretty cool. We actually call it our recruitment killer analysis tool. You go to the site and you walk through our analysis tool, which takes just about a minute, and our custom software takes all your answers and figures out your number one recruitment killer. The number one thing that's holding you back. Then you just enter in your email and we actually instantly take you to a video where Coach Kerwick and I sit down and address your number one killer and show you how to fix it in about 15 minutes. And then we email you a backup copy so you can watch it later. You don't have to watch it right now or you can come back and watch it again. It's awesome and again, it's totally free. So if you finally wanna feel like you're in full control of the recruiting process and you don't wanna make any of these simple mistakes that might crush your chances of playing in college, go click the link down below in the description of this video and you can immediately go through our recruitment killer analysis tool. Who knows, in the next 15 to 20 minutes, your whole perspective on the recruiting process might change for the better. Hope to see you on the other side.